diabetic neuropathy. What is diabetic neuropathy? So it's very predictable. The eye changes and the kidney changes are very predictable. But neuropathy, sometimes neuropathy can just affect the sensation. So that is the commonest in fact. We call it as peripheral neuropathy, which is affecting the sensory system. So what happens when the sensory system is affected? It can affect you anywhere, but mainly it affects the... And that leads to what is called as a diabetic foot ulcer, as you can see. When this ulcer does not heal, it can lead to a severe foot infection. It can even lead to gangrene and it may even lead. You know that when somebody gets low sugar, they feel very hungry. Their heart starts palpitating. There is tremors of the fingers, sweating. These are all symptoms of low sugar. So you immediately go and eat something and then it becomes okay. What if you have autonomic neuropathy, which is very severe, the blood sugar will drop. Hello everyone. I would like to speak about a very common complication of diabetes. This affects almost everyone who has had diabetes for 15 or 20 years or more. Yes, I am referring to the complication called as diabetic neuropathy. What is diabetic neuropathy? As the name itself suggests, when diabetes affects the nerves of the body, it is called as neuropathy. But unlike the other organs which get affected, for example, when the eye gets affected, there are very specific lesions. It can affect the, it can lead to bleeding of the eyes, inside the eyes, or it can lead to some leaking of the blood vessels in the eye. Similarly, when the kidney is affected, the first thing that happens is that some protein starts leaking in the urine. Small quantities of albumin, which we call as microalbuminuria. So it's very predictable. The eye changes and the kidney changes are very predictable. But neuropathy is a very big subject. It is not of one type at all. For example, sometimes neuropathy can just affect the sensation. So that is the commonest in fact. We call it as peripheral neuropathy, which is affecting the sensory system. So what happens when the sensory system is affected? It can affect you anywhere, but mainly it affects the feet. When the feet are affected, slowly the sensation in the feet go away. So when the sensation goes away, as you can see in this picture here, this person is stamping on a nail and he does not even know that he is stamping on a nail. Suppose there is a nail on the road and you accidentally step on it. What will happen? You will immediately withdraw your leg, isn't it? But when you have neuropathy and especially if the neuropathy is very severe, what happens is like you saw there, he is now putting his leg on this nail, it has gone right inside. Because he stamped on that nail, he has got an injury and that leads to what is called as a diabetic foot ulcer, as you can see. When this ulcer does not heal, it can lead to a severe foot infection, it can even lead to gangrene and it may even lead to an amputation. So what started off as a very simple decrease in the sensation of the foot can even end in an amputation. And that is why neuropathy is very important. I told you there are different types of neuropathy. Sometimes 
instead of affecting the sensation it can affect what is called as the motor system in other words it affects the muscles when it affects the muscles or the motor system it can lead to many complications for example you can get what is called as a foot drop the foot falls off like that because one nerve has got affected and the muscles are affected it can lead to that it can lead to what is called as claw foot it can lead to a total damage of the foot itself the shape of the foot itself may be altered but don't worry all these happen only in very severe cases of neuropathy and if you look after your diabetes well don't get frightened by these pictures that you saw you need not develop any of these complications of diabetes but neuropathy is not just when your foot gets affected there are many places in the body where neuropathy can occur for example in the eye there are many muscles of the eye and each of these muscles are controlled by one nerve we call them as cranial nerves and you can have the third cranial nerve or the fourth cranial nerve or the sixth cranial nerve even the seventh cranial nerve or the facial nerve is also there if that particular nerve gets affected the third nerve gets affected you get a condition called as ptosis what is ptosis one eye lid closes if you look at this particular picture here you can see that this is a person who has ptosis and so one eye they are not able to open at all of course if you do exercise and take treatment and get the sugar under control it may recover the third nerve paralysis or the cranial neuropathy what we call as can recover completely very commonly the facial nerve can get affected you would have seen people who have a bell's palsy isn't it one side of the face is not moving so you'll find that this side is not moving or that side is not moving that's what happens when you get a facial nerve paralysis we call it as a bell's palsy now again it's quite common but if you control your diabetes you need not get it and if you treat it properly it may completely recover also apart from peripheral neuropathy there is another type of neuropathy which is called as autonomic neuropathy and if you have autonomic neuropathy what happens is that there can be a sudden drop in the blood pressure when you stand let us say your blood pressure is 130 by 80 mm of mercury now you stand and suddenly the blood pressure drops to 100 by 70 that means a 30 mm drop in the systolic blood pressure when that happens the person feels giddy postural hypotension they feel as if they are going to fall off that is due to autonomic neuropathy affecting the sympathetic system also when you have autonomic neuropathy what happens is you don't sweat when you should be sweating in a hot place you don't sweat at all that can be another sign in severe autonomic neuropathy the patient will not have any symptoms of low sugar you know that when somebody gets low sugar they feel very hungry their heart starts palpitating there is tremors of the fingers sweating these are all symptoms of low sugar so you immediately go and eat something and then it becomes okay what if you have autonomic neuropathy which is very severe the blood sugar will drop from 100 70 60 50 40 and still the patient is not having any symptoms suddenly the blood sugar will go to 20 and then the patient faints or goes into a low sugar coma this can happen in people who have very severe autonomic neuropathy so in such patients what do we do we don't allow the sugar to go down at all and we'll tell the patient you keep your sugar at 130 or 140 or 150 that is enough because i don't want you to go into low sugar of course today it's much easier 10 years ago we were worried a lot today we have these small patches 
you can put the small sensor on your hand which will continuously give you a glucose reading as you can see in this particular graph. If you see this graph, you can see that there is a continuous glucose monitoring tracing. Now, what is the advantage of doing this? We call it as ambulatory glucose profile or continuous glucose monitoring or CGM. Just a small patch like a coin, like a carom board coin you wear on your hand and you can read your blood sugars throughout the day and throughout the night, 100 times in a day. Now, what is the advantage of doing that? When you are sleeping, then the blood sugars, suppose they are dropping, you may not know. But the next morning, when you look at the graph, you will know, oh my God, it has gone so low in the night and I did not even know. So, you can reduce your medication, either the tablet or the insulin, you can reduce and prevent the low sugar uh, from occurring and you can prevent yourself from going into hypoglycemic coma or low sugar coma. So, this is one of the uh, you know the disadvantages of having uh, autonomic neuropathy because you may not have hypoglycemic awareness. We call it as hypoglycemic unawareness. You are not aware of it at all. Some of the other things that happen when you have severe neuropathy in men, you can get importance. So, erectile dysfunction, we also call it as ED for short. If you have uncontrolled diabetes for a long time, you are not able to get an erection at all. Therefore, they cannot have sex at all because of this erectile dysfunction. Of course, this also can be prevented by good control of diabetes. Today, we have got medicines to treat the ED or the erectile dysfunction. But you must be careful and keep your sugars under control so that you do not develop erectile dysfunction. So, as you can see, neuropathy is a varied syndrome where it affects the muscles, it affects the nerves, can affect the genital system, can affect the bladder. So, when, you, when it affects the bladder, what happens? Normally, the bladder sensation is there. When your bladder is half full or three-fourth full, you feel like going to the toilet. When the bladder nerves are affected, you do not feel the sensation at all. The bladder will become so full, suddenly the urine may come out. Incontinence, we call it. Until then, the patient does not even know that the bladder is full. These are of course in extreme cases. There is one other thing about neuropathy which you should know and that is silent heart attacks. Suppose the nerves to the chest are affected due to neuropathy. When you get a heart attack what happens is you say that I am having pain and that is what makes you go to the doctor. Suppose those nerves are affected, you have a heart attack inside and you do not even know about it. In fact, I would like to tell you a story of a true story which happened in my hospital patient came and we had asked history routinely when we ask the history we do ask do you get any chest pain do you get a thing have you had any heart problem and he said no 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 so we sent him uh, to the uh, uh, to the next floor in fact he walked up one floor to get the ecg done so when the ecg was done the ecg technician came running to me and he said sir 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 see this he has got acute heart attack so when i saw he had features of an acute heart attack. He probably had it the previous day or that morning and he has not known about it at all. Now, I rushed up to the ECG room to the technician where the technician was there. The patient was happily lying down without any problem. So, I told him, sir, are you all right? No, no, I am all right. Why, why? No, sir, there is a small problem. What problem? No, no, there is a small problem in your ECG. What problem in my ECG? Uh, he thought I am simply telling something. So, I said, no, no, it looks as if you have had a small heart attack. He started laughing, heart attack, come on doctor, I have not had any pain, I have not had breathlessness, I have not had anything and you are telling me that I got a heart attack, how can it be, you know. Then I told him, no, if you do not believe me, I will get a cardiologist now, let him come and see. So, I got the cardiologist When he came and said, he said straight into the ICU, you have to go. Patient still would not believe until more tests were done and it was proven. And then finally, one day after he got discharged, he came to thank me and he said, Doc, had you not found out that heart attack, I would have gone off like that somewhere, I could have died, isn't it? I said, yes, but good thing, God is great, we found out the heart attack. Then he asked me, why is that I did not have any symptoms, doctor? I should have had some symptoms, no? I said, unfortunately, you have neuropathy and because you have this neuropathy, you are not getting any symptoms. Those are extreme cases which I told you. Some of the common symptoms which people say, when I am walking, even my chapels fall off, I do not know that they have fallen off. 
that's a common symptom which people tell me okay then another thing which people tell me is i am walking but i am walking on a hard surface it looks as if i am walking on cotton wool as if i am walking on a mattress it looks like so that is a lack of sensation is not able to feel the hard ground and therefore he or she feels that they are walking on a mattress a very common symptom there is another symptom which is called as paresthesia what is paresthesia paresthesia means altered sensation i, I one of the ex governors of tamil nadu whom i was treating actually told me this and it's quite common he said doctor when i walk it looks as if there is water under my foot i'll take my foot and see there is no water at all i'll see the ground there is no water at all but i'm sure there is water there see what is happening is the sensation which is supposed to go from that nerve slowly to the spinal cord and from there to the brain that has got altered because some damage occurred and the rewiring which took place of the nerves took place in a wrong manner so some altered sensation is going so when there is no water the brain is getting a message there is water there this is called as paresthesia i'm sure some of you with long term diabetes would have had these symptoms so what do you do to find out whether you've got neuropathy or not every year when you go to the diabetic center insist that the tests for neuropathy are done look at your feet look at the other tests that are there for neuropathy and see whether you've got it more importantly see that your sugars are kept under good control if your hba1c the 3 months control test is kept below 7% the chances of you getting neuropathy is very very small and even if it is there it may even be reversible so you don't have to get worried about neuropathy but focus on good diabetes control see that you visit the diabetic center at least 3 times if not 4 times in a year and once in a year please get your entire systems checked your heart your kidney your nerves your eyes and all the organs because we never know when these complications can set in it can be very silent as i told you like the silent heart attack it can be very very silent and therefore it is your duty to remind the doctor and say my annual checkup is due doctor i better come and do everything a stitch in time saves nine they say so if you are able to detect these complications early we can totally reverse it in future videos i'll be talking about the eye in greater detail about the kidney and the heart and other complications i hope you liked this video please do share your feedback with me and if you like any other aspects of neuropathy that you would like to hear about or any other suggestions please feel free to write in the comments section what that what you would like me to speak on and i would be happy to interact with you and provide you that knowledge that you are looking for thank you very much stay safe and goodbye